Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to the HSBC booth at the Singapore FinTech Festival. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Christina Lee. I'm from the commercial banking team in Singapore. And maybe if I can hand over to our two guests here, Louisa and Peter, to introduce themselves as well. Thank you, Christina. My name is Louisa Zhang. I head up the Asia investment practice for HSBC Corporate Ventures. So we're the CBC arm of HSBC. Um, leave it at that first so we can go into more later, but very excited to be here and tell you more about you know, what HSBC can do from an equity investment perspective. Thank you. And uh, my name is Peter Dingle, uh, and I head up ecosystems and partnerships for the venture capital team within asset management. So it's part of HSBC's broader group, and we are a venture capital business, and we invest in fintech, uh, which is why we're here in Singapore at the world's best fintech festival, right? Of course, of course. So thank you again for the introduction. And maybe if I can hand over first to Louisa, because when I speak with startups in Singapore, a lot of them are very surprised that as a bank, HSBC, we actually deploy equity into startups. So if you can share a bit more about our investment mandate as a bank, what we're interested in, so that startups who are here, fintechs who are here and interested in working with us, they can also know who to look for. Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, I'm glad we're having this session because Actually, HSBC has multiple pockets where we invest equity into startups. So starting with my team, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're the CVC arm of HSBC. What that means is we're not a fund. Uh, we, are, we invest off balance sheet on behalf of the bank into disruptive and innovative startups uh, ranging between Series A going all the way to pre-IPO. Uh, and you know it's a very broad range um, and the reason for that is uh, we're very heavily strategic focused investors um, so you know across the CVC spectrum different banks have different kind of strategies for our bank we're very very focused on the model of partnership plus investment um, you know capital um, capital is uniform out there but what we really believe is as a bank how can we uh, bring value to the startup while also giving them capital. So uh, check size wise, we typically do anywhere between three million to 30. Uh, that's within the remit of our, our, of our team. Uh, and in terms of um, what we invest in, uh, it really is kind of very closely pegged to what the bank deem as you know, high priority. So typically we think of the investment thesis in two kind of separate buckets. The first bucket is within you know, FinTech, InsureTech, uh, technologies that's closely linked with uh, the bank's core business. So, you know, as HSBC, we have a very large uh, wealth business. So, you know, we're always looking for new solutions to help us better serve our customers in the wealth uh, solution side. Uh, we have a very large commercial bank business with over 1.4 million customers globally. So, you know, how can we serve uh, customers? How can we reduce the cost of serve? How can we use you know all the new technologies of like embedded lending uh, to to better reach these customers? So these are things that's top of mind always for us. And then the second bucket I would say is more around deep tech. So as a bank, we want to think about you know what's changing the landscape in the next not just the next three years but five to ten years. So within this bucket, we're actively looking for startups, you know, building solutions in quantum computing in AI, uh, in ESG, and in blockchain. So uh, with th these segments, we're really looking for market leaders, we're looking for companies that can bring us to the forefront of these technologies and, and can be that uh, sounding board with, with the bank. Thank you so much, Louisa. So maybe if we can switch gears to Peter Dingle from the asset management side. So what kind of investment mandate do we have from asset management team and how does that differ from Louisa? Yeah, fantastic. And so. If, you, if that wasn't broad enough, thinking about what could be strategic to HSBC, our asset management business is not strategic, but it can go a little bit broader. Uh, we can look at companies purely from a financial investment standpoint, just purely looking at what our, our LPs will, will be able to return from, from a, being involved in a, in a venture capital product. But we can go a little bit broader to things like the insurance tech sector or how health tech in terms of mental health, physical health and financial health are intersecting because 
those two areas are very, very uh, interesting to, to how um, technology has not only changed the banking world and the financial uh, landscapes, but are also starting to impact insurance and uh, people's lives from both a protection but also from a wealth perspective. So we also invest at a sort of sweet spot of about a Series A stage. For us, that means companies that are turning over about a million US dollars in annual recurring revenue. Um, and that's, that's a little bit earlier on the, on the pathway to a lot of the strategic businesses. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the other parts of the bank that help those companies as they grow. Because we, we sort of see ourselves as part of this amazing journey where uh, new businesses can, can join HSBC and get a bank account with HSBC, but then can find themselves with some venture capital investment, can go on to potentially be strategic to the business, uh, or go on to some other features or other products that the bank has, particularly if they want to go, grow from Singapore to, to, to Europe or Singapore to other parts of the world. And so we're really excited to be here because this is a fantastic place to meet uh, not only fintech businesses in the B2B space, uh, insurance tech businesses, health tech businesses. We also like to go a little bit broader into the Web3 and and specifically the next gen um, uh, infrastructure space. So looking at how blockchain or some of these technologies can, can solve the problems of large institutional businesses are around Asia and around the world. That's really great to hear, Peter. So as we can hear, actually, it's a very wide investment mandate from our asset management team, um, which is surprising typically when we share that with startups. So if I can broaden and take up a bit on where Peter left off on how our bank actually supports uh, startups more holistically, also beyond equity. So that's where my team comes in from commercial banking. We actually bank startups at very early stages to support founders from ideation all the way to IPO. Um, not just from account opening when they first need a bank account, but also as a scale and grow internationally and regionally. And more importantly, um, when they actually need funding beyond equity, we do recommend that they look at debt, uh, where we do have something called a new economy fund that's launched out of Singapore. It's a $200 million fund that we have set aside to support pre-profit startups to help them scale and grow. More importantly, to meet the gaps in their working capital, um, if they have any, because that's where we realize that you know there is a gap in the market on supporting them, and that's where equity certainly shouldn't be used to support working capital needs as well. So if I can also hand back to Louisa, just to hear a bit more in terms of the journey when a startup first engages with you, all the way to the first check being issued to them, how does that actually look like? There's typically two kind of two channels how we how we meet startups. The first is um, introduction through our business. As I mentioned, we're mostly a strategic investor. We care a lot about um, the partnership and what the what the startups are doing with our business and how we can play a part in that. So one big source that you know how we come across interesting startups is actually through our business colleagues. Our business actually work with. Uh, hundreds of thousands of startups uh, and and technology providers out there uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, they're a customer, they're a partner, and they really know these business inside out. They know what's their competitive edge, they know what they're strong in, and they know what the potential trajectory is. So a lot of times, you know, they introduce interesting companies to us, and, and this is a great way because uh, in a way, they've already done half of our job for us because, you know, they've basically did the uh, technology due diligence. They are a customer. They can provide valuable feedbacks to our team. So that's that's one way that we really like to uh, meet startups from. Uh, and the other way is, you know, through our team. We we work with a lot of the venture capitalists in the region. Uh, we're also very actively meeting startups. So you know, if there are any startup founders out there, more than happy to you know have a conversation. And what our team really strives to do is. Uh, after we meet a startup, we, we really have to think about where that fits within the business. So our function is a global function. We don't sit within one business line. Uh, we're not you know, sitting within a specific function. Uh, and we really play that role of you know, connecting the startup to the right stakeholder because uh, HSBC is a large 
organization, uh, as a startup, especially selling into a bank, the biggest pitfall is to be speaking and pitching to the wrong person. So what our team strive to do is really get you connected to the right team, get you connected to the senior stakeholders, so you know, you're not grinding away at the wrong touch point. So that's a really good advice, um, Louisa. And if I can also, you know, switch gears to Peter just to share what are some of the best practices when engaging with your team in order to, you know, pitch to you and get you guys on board as an investor as well. Yeah, fantastic. So um, we try and meet uh, as a team. We're probably trying to meet ten to fifteen companies a week, and that means it, sometimes you the, <coughs> the businesses might not be directly relevant to the mandate because they're not really sure what we're looking for. Um, so we, we try and uh, make a connection, have a, have a half hour chat about the business. Uh, when it's relevant, we go straight to documentation, straight to NDA, and, and then you know, if, if, if it's really interesting, our investment committee will progress it through a due diligence process. We, we're, we're quite innovative in the sense that we've moved to about a six to eight week process to make an investment. Uh, and we've done that um, through, with about three companies already from Singapore. Um, in our FinTech fund, we, you know, we've grown that quickly over the last 18 months, and Singapore's already on the map for us. Um, so really, really keen to meet a broad range of different startups uh, this, this week. Um, really keen to, to and where those in companies aren't relevant to our mandates or aren't relevant to strategies, we, we're really keen to be helpful. Uh, we do have a really good network around Asia. Uh, we are able to open doors and help companies grow regardless of our investment. And we try to be useful. Thank you so much, Peter. And actually, amongst the audience, we do see a founder amongst us whom we have invested in, Vincent from BizVest. Thank you for supporting us. And uh, really great to have continued conversations with you as well from the commercial banking side. So maybe if I can add on and supplement from an advice perspective, if startups want to tap on the debt that I've mentioned from commercial banking, it would be good if you guys can start conversations early with us so that we can get to know you as a company, get to know you as a founder, get comfortable with your business and get comfortable with your team. All these are very important conversations for us to then socialize with our credit and risk colleagues to get them to approve whatever lines that we want to get approved to support your loans as you grow and scale. Um, so I would say it's not uh, either or from an equity or debt standpoint. It's good to consider options on both sides and ultimately you have to be clear as well on your financial strategy on when you want to tap on equity and when you want to tap on debt. So maybe just a final question on our side, right? So um, with all the potential that you've mentioned in Singapore and the excitement, you know, what do you see in terms of you know, the growth in Singapore and you know, when, when can we actually expect representatives on the ground as well from your teams in Singapore? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the tough question, Christina. <laughs> well, actually, um, you know, uh, for us, we have around 30 portfolios globally. Uh, four of them are from Asia to date, and we, we're really looking to double that um, in the next couple of years. And having spent time here in the last few days, it's been so encouraging. I think we're seeing a, a couple of really interesting uh, spaces uh, of Singapore companies doing really well and having that global competitive edge. I think one is really in these areas that requires a lot of regulatory cl uh, clarity and support. I think Singapore, the MAS, has done such an amazing job to be really at the forefront of setting clear guidelines in, in their perspective and how, how they view these space. So looking at, you know, two, three years ago, there were tons of blockchain Web3 companies that came to Singapore and serving global markets. Uh, and now I've, I've just met probably two or three Gen AI companies who are planning to set up in Singapore because of that 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 nature. Uh, another space I've, I've been really keen to see more companies on is you know on the B two B SaaS space. Uh, I think Singapore's market has a very unique dynamic that was able to create. Uh, these amazing companies serving the B2B SaaS enterprise space, which um, I think has a global potential. So, you know, we have a couple on our target list that we're speaking to and tracking. Hopefully we can complete those investments and I can come to Singapore more often. Thank you. Thank you, Louisa. How about Peter? Well, look, we, we, have, a, we have a fantastic team here in Singapore. Um, and uh, Singapore is playing a critical role in the continued growth of Asia as as a region. We, we all know that Asia is the growth region for the, for the entire world right now. 
particularly when things are difficult between some of the largest trading partners in the world, Singapore really shines as, as, a, as an opportunity. And, and so where we are looking at a, a huge amount of growth over the next few years is as the Greater Bay area of, of, of Hong Kong and China starts to look for trading partners, Singapore is the first on the list. Um, and if you look at what HSBC has done in the insurance sector in Singapore, just in, the, in, the, in recent times, the, the acquisition of our, our insurance business here is also providing a huge opportunity for transformation. Um, you know, this whole region is growing in terms of its protection needs and the data and analytics that are coming out of these, these industries. So we're super excited to meet companies here this week and uh, we're going to be around at the booth and in the, in the show all day, today and tomorrow. And uh, we'll probably see people around for cocktails later as well. Fantastic. So you guys know who to look for if you want to have any conversations on equity on that. Doesn't matter if you're not based out of here because we are. Um, I am from the Singapore team and I'm based typically out of Singapore. And we're very closely connected, which is why we're even seated together today. So any conversations, any questions, happy to have a chat with you right after this. Thank you so much, Peter and Louisa. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much.